good morning, YouTube. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and you're watching the Clay Way. If this video is helpful, please consider giving me them sweet old thumbs up, putting some nice comments down below, or just commenting on the procedure that we're about to show you in the video. And at the very least, if you would, please turn the volume down on your computer while you're sleeping, put on one of my sweet playlists, maybe like a Sprinter playlist right here, let my videos play from front to back. That helps me out the most because YouTubers get paid by video retention and views. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I certainly try to answer all of them for absolutely free for my subscribers. Remember, don't be the next to them, be the first to you, and if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. This is going to be a really long introduction. And Jeep people, don't get mad at me because I'm tagging Jeep Grand Cherokee in this with the 3.0 diesel back when Daimler Chrysler used to own Jeep Dodge, blah, blah, blah. So in this video, we're actually going to be working on a 3.0 common rail diesel. Now they put this engine in, I've seen it in Jeep Liberties, I've seen it in Jeep Grand Cherokees, Dodge Sprinters. Mercedes Sprinters, Freightliner Sprinters, and we're gonna show you how to fix this thing for two freaking dollars. Yeah, that's right, I said two freaking dollars. And I'm gonna explain to you why we're fixing it, what's gonna happen if you do this repair, and how it's gonna turn out for you. Now, what I've got sitting right here in front of me are some intakes that I took off of a 2013 Mercedes Sprinter. Now, the vehicle that I'm working on today is going to be a 2007-2008 Dodge Sprinter. Same thing. It'll look a little bit different underneath the hood, but not a ton of difference. More like improvements on wiring locations and some improvements as you get to the newer Sprinters like 2018 and such. I think this video should cover up to 2018. I haven't worked on anything newer than a 2014, but what we've got right here is we've got a couple of intakes off of the 3.0 diesel. And what happens is there's a little motor inside here that moves these back and forth and it opens and closes these flaps as your turbo goes inside the engine. So when air is spooled up, these flaps open up and allow more air to be pressed inside the engine. Well, over time, they get a nasty little gunk on them right there. Oh, it's terrible. Take that off, put that on your finger. Oh, it's gross stuff. Now, you can take these off and clean them, but the problem is, is you can't put these back together. I heard somebody said that they steamed these and that worked well. I personally haven't tried that. I soaked mine in Berryman's chemical. Uh, over time, it just got stuck again. So, this time we're gonna try something a little bit different that I've been wanting to try for about two years now. I haven't done it. I know from reading forums that it actually works. So we're gonna show you how to basically bypass this. But I'm gonna give you a good explainer on how this works and put the camera up there and probably re-explain what I just told you, but so you can actually see what's going on easily. So this is underneath your intake and it fits in between the two intakes. This is the right side right here, and this is the left side right here. I think I got that correct. All right, so what this does is this moves these flaps right here. Now, this thing goes bad. This is your swirl motor. Uh, the, the motor goes bad or the arms get stuck and won't move like that one right there. This side actually works really well, moves back and forth. So we're gonna show you how to eliminate this with the resistor. We're gonna need a 4.7 ohm quarter watt resistor to make the computer think that this is actually working when it's not. So it will generate the amount of turbo spool that it needs to keep the motor up in its RPMs. This procedure can actually be done in probably 15 to 20 minutes without taking a whole slew of things apart. You do not need to disassemble the engine. You don't need to replace these intakes right now. Eventually you may want to consider doing that, but maybe cost is a factor for you and you can't afford the $4,500 or you don't live close to me 
and I can't do these things super cheap for you. So, what we Okay, so this is us looking at our motor and we're looking down at the intakes right here. This is our driver's side intake, this is our passenger side intake, and this is our swirl motor. If you're getting the same code for me, like uh, your swirl motor's not working properly, or you've got an intake code or something like that, this has all got to be changed. And if you've done any research, you know that these intakes are very expensive. And very labor intensive you got to remove the turbo you've got to remove the intakes then you might as well change your oil cooler while you're inside there so essentially what is going on inside there and i'm gonna flip these over and i'm gonna explain to you how this kind of works on this side of the engine your egr valve emissions go through the engine and then they're eventually transferred over to here they go through both sides but what happens is is these arms down inside here are supposed to go back and forth. They don't do any of that on this side. On this side, they work properly, even though they're all gummy. Okay, when these aren't switching, down here on the rails are these little silver tabs. There's a bracket mounted to this, and there's a little sensor that tells it where it's located at. So it tells the ECM, hey, I'm here, or hey, I'm here, you know, and it communicates to the ECM. That's also done through the swirl motor right there. It is not doing that right now because they do not move back and forth. Okay, so a lot of people get it confused and think just because it has a swirl motor code that this swirl motor is bad, so they go ahead and order a swirl motor. Nine out of ten times it's going to be the intakes are bad and this motor isn't even defective. When the ECM recognizes a swirl motor fault or the sensor recognizes that the arm is not moving, it puts it in the limp mode and shuts off the turbo. Now I've been doing sprinter repairs for a number of years now and I actually had a guy tell me, and I don't know if this is true because I've never been to Europe and I've never dismantled a European sprinter, but they say that they don't have these here doesn't make a lot of sense to me why they would do that here in the states and not there but he did tell me that they don't have these so what we're going to do is we're going to actually trick the computer into thinking that these clips and these valves are opening and closing now i know what you're thinking if these things are closed what's going to happen to that air well it's going to be forced through this one hole instead of both of these holes but I do know that there's several forums out there where gentlemen speak about doing this and they haven't had any problems. I'm going to do it to my personal vehicle. So you can comment down below and ask me how it went and how long it lasted. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Why don't I just take them off and clean them? Well, I already took these off and tried cleaning them. And the problem was that a couple weeks later, it just went back to exactly the same way it was, and I had the thing shiny. But the solution that I'm gonna give you here in the video is gonna not only be cheap, it's gonna be quick, and you can't already break what's already broken. You might be able to make it a little bit worse, but what do you have to lose? You got a van that won't run in the driveway and your pockets are empty. Well, I'm gonna to try to keep some of that money inside your pocket and you have a van in the driveway that runs down the road. For about the next minute and a half, I'm gonna talk about how I got to this diagnosis. Okay, so we're in the van, we have no turbo noise, we've got our check engine light on, and I'm pressing the gas all the way down fuel, I shouldn't say gas, all the way down, and I got nothing. If I fluctuate my pedal, I really barely have anything, and this thing should soar right up to 3,000 RPMs and shift gears, and we should be flying down the road, but we're not. Okay, so on the 2006 to 2018, from what I understand, I haven't worked on one newer than 2014, our ALDL port is right here. So we're going to go ahead and plug into that. Now, what we're looking for on this model is we're looking for intake switching ports or maybe a swirl motor actuator 
code and we're gonna fix that we might have other codes but I think this is the one that we primarily need to be worried about when the codes pull up in the scanner there's going to be stored codes and active codes stored codes are codes that happen before but are not happening continuously at this moment so we're not too worried about stored codes we're worried about active ones now we're going to go in here and read our codes oh we've got a lot but I think I caused most of these. So right now I'm worried about this P2513 switching off of intake port. That basically means that my flaps aren't moving. Now I've reset my codes and I'm gonna reread them. Air induction pressure and switching off of intake port. This is more of the code that I'm worried about. I know why this code is here. So I'm not too worried about that. So we're gonna fix that real quick, real super simple and really, really cheap. Now with the hood slash bonnet open, we're gonna remove this right here. How this is removed is down here, there's a little tab and then we'll be able to pop that up and off. Then we're gonna remove these two plugs right here. Just push down on that there, pull that out and this actually has two so we're gonna pull on them and pull it off. If it doesn't come off, pull the tabs, push it on, and then pull it back sharply. Now we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and loosen up this clamp right here. That'll allow us to wiggle the hose right off of there. Now we're gonna pull up on these two. These can be kind of stubborn, so taking a screwdriver and popping them up just like this is perfectly acceptable. Now, as we pull up, this tube is gonna pop out of its holder right here, and that's the air intake. And then we should be able to pull this off of the brackets there in the back and remove it out of the way. Now taking a Torx T27, we can remove the screws that hold down our top engine cover here and remove that out of the way. Now, to give myself more room to work and make good video, I'm gonna remove this tube and this tube right here. And I'm gonna also end up removing one, two, three, and then there's another eight millimeter bolt back there that will help us remove that. Now, if I was taking that bolt out, with the short extension and an eight millimeter socket, I could remove the bolt from right there. Okay, this is what happens when you don't stick that screw back in that goes over here on the side of this to anchor this down because of that turbo boost is so great. It blows the piping apart. Same will happen if you don't put that O-ring down inside there either. This one right here. And when this sits inside there, it sits behind that post. The screw that secures on the U-clamp is a Torx 15. With that screw removed, we can wiggle this and we should be able to pull it up out of the way. It may not be necessary to remove all of this, but I'm doing it for the video and just in case you have to. When you pull this housing off, there's gonna be an O-ring either here or located on the end of the turbo. We need to make sure that we replace that when we reinstall it. Now, with them out of the way, it actually gives us a good line of sight down here to the swirl actuator motor and the electrical connector. Now, the plug that we need to disconnect is located right down inside here and this one right here. These are the resistors that I'm gonna use. 4.7 ohm, quarter watt, that I picked up off the internet. Now, because everything is so tight fitting on the sprinter, I ended up loosening these up to be able to get this bolt back inside the bracket. I've also pulled my connector out here forward so I could reassemble everything and have it in a spot that I could work on it in the future if I needed to. 
because I'm going to make a better connection eventually, but I'm making the connection the way I'm gonna do it here in the video for the short term to show you that it actually functions. Now I'll make sure that all of my bolts are inserted in their locations prior to tightening anything up because these all fit very tight. Now I've got my resistor inserted just like this and I'm going to give you a close up of how the bars go. With the yellow bar going to the number two position and the red bar going to the number three position, this is my empty space right here. Now to help hold it in there for the time being, I bent the resistor over the top and then I electrical taped over the top of that. Okay, I haven't been able to give it any gas yet, but we're gonna see what's up. Whoa, <laughs> it's like a starship. This thing has got balls for days. Oh yeah, I can definitely hear the turbo spooling. Everything's working right. <laughs> I love it. Now before when I would reset the check engine light, I would have turbo spool for about a second or two and then it would drop into limp mode. That is definitely not the case any longer. So we're tooling down the highway at 70 and about 2,800, 2,900 RPMs. And she's running smooth. No check engine light, no problems. Hope yours turns out the same way as mine. So I'm very pleased to say it's been about two weeks, about five or 600 miles. Absolutely no problems whatsoever. I did have a problem with the turbo hose blowing off and I had to replace an O-ring in there after making this video, but that's just because my turbo is working so well. Hopefully I saved you guys a couple dollars, uh, probably a couple thousand to be honest with you. Eventually you're gonna need to do these intakes as the carbon starts to build up from your EGR, but for the time being, you're gonna be able to get by, keep rolling down the road, very cheap, very easy. Please consider subscribing, but most of all, because it makes me a couple tenths of a cent, literally two tenths of a cent per view. Turn the volume down, let one of my sweet playlists play while you're sleeping. That would be awesome. Remember, don't be the next to them, be the first to you, and I promise you, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. God bless and have a great day.